Welcome everybody out to our business on our online class training. Um, tonight's topic is focus on your noble purpose. We're going to talk about you know your purpose, your reason for being and, and doing. <laughs> so and Jade's our presenter as you know and um, here she is. Okay. Um, this is uh, it's, the subtitle here is blessing humanity with your unique gifts and talents. So this is a little bit different to finding your why. A lot of people talk about finding your why and that's good. Um, but I'm going to tell you now that if it doesn't link somehow to your noble purpose, um, then it may not be able to carry you through the hard times. Uh, so I'm going to define a noble purpose here. I'm going to scroll down. Um, okay. So here I was just saying to people when I first... Um, Started, felt, I first felt like I needed to do a doTERRA business. I was a little bit scared, right? Um, and, you know, I felt like, wait, God wanted me to. So one, he would help me because he wanted me to. And he knows that I can do it. So who am I to doubt him? If he, he's given me an opportunity to do something, um, he called me to a work, a calling, then somehow he knows that I can accomplish it. And so number three, if... I were going to spend years of my life working, and I might as well do something I like. So I figured, hey, you know, so whatever little talents I have, I have pictures of little, a small bowl of tomatoes. I mean, we don't grow very many things. Um, and when we do, it's not that much, but I think it's like sharing whatever small talents you have, small gifts you have to help humanity, to bless other people. So that's kind of a representative of what we're talking about today. So your noble purpose is your calling, okay? It's just what you feel so strongly about. And this week has been uh, one of the um, amazing weeks that, like every week, they, everything that I'm going to teach, um, it, that same topic comes up. So this week I had several girls come up to me and say, look, I feel so strongly God wants me to share this with this person or want me to do this as a business. And at my work, you know, they're doing this and this and this. So it just makes me feel like, yeah, I have a reason now to leave. Um, you know, lots of little reasons like that. And I thought, huh, look at all these people coming up and telling me they're feeling their noble purpose. So I want to help you um, identify it and figure it out and know why it's important to, to put time and effort into this. Okay. So I wrote here, the more I thought about this business, um, the more I felt like it was a meaningful, fun job for me, okay? And, you know, even though I don't have the skills, and I didn't feel like I have the skills or the knowledge or the self-confidence, you know, a lot of people say, oh, look, I'll do it when I have confidence. You know, none of that, I didn't have any of that. But what I had was my noble purpose because I knew what I had to do. And it was funny because I would do the funniest things. I would think, oh, in the middle of the night, I'm thinking, when I wake up, remember to paint my nails you know, or something because if I'm standing up there, what if they look at my fingers? Little silly things, but I tried. I did my very best. Um, so if you have this noble purpose and it's powerful and it's strong, um, then you, it will help you. Okay, it helps you stay focused. So you don't need a reason to be motivated. Oh, Jade, I've lost motivation. Well... I think you need to dig into it and find your noble purpose beyond your why. Some people say, well, I want to stay home and be with my children. Great. There's more to it. Keep digging. Um, I want my husband to be home. Great. Keep going. If it hasn't motivated you to action, right, then you still need to dig a little bit deeper. It helps you be selfless because you're looking at your, um, your calling, not you. Okay. You just got to do it anyways. I, I meet so many people thinking, you know, that, oh, I don't know if I can do it, but I have to do it. I just feel like I have to. And then things happen, okay, because they're, they're being selfless. Okay, and it helps you learn who you are when you lose yourself in service. So don't you feel like that's, that's been true for us? It's like we have learned to step up to the plate. Uh, you know, like I said, I, I couldn't even sleep if I knew that the next day I'm going to do a class and now I can stand up in front of hundreds of people and speak without feeling, you know, just tremblings. 
and that's amazing. <laughs> that's totally different. It wasn't who I was. Um, and not only that, I, I can help people. I can really feel that I have something significant that will change their life. Okay. More than like a simple plate of cookies that I used to think, okay, that's going to cheer up their day. <laughs> no, this is so much more. Um, and then it helps you feel free to make mistakes because somehow you, you know you can do this. And, you know, if you mess up, big deal, you can still have to get back up and continue this work. Okay? It helps you endure difficult times. I have people telling me that um, they, they're earning a couple of dollars for hours and hours of work. And I say, yeah, that was us. <laughs> That's okay. You know, and they're like, what? How can you be okay with that? And I said, well, look, I'm still learning. And, you know, I'm getting paid to learn. So, um, you know, that might be like a difficult time for them. But uh, because this is a calling for me, um, I still have to do it anyways. And then later on, I see that I'm compensated for all the effort before too, okay? Um, so when you get up to this stage, it feels like, I'm getting paid so much more than, um, than the effort that I put out, but it just kind of pays for all the work that you did previously too, okay, when you didn't get paid. Um, so it defines success as helping people. So any time that I'm helping somebody, I've served and I fulfilled my calling. It wasn't, you know, Jay, do this so you can get this X amount of money or this prestige or whatever, I just feel like I, I did it, I'm successful. And when you feel successful, you attract more success, okay? Uh, so many people are, you know, worried about how much money they're gonna earn or whatever, and I remind them, I say, well, just take this one person, for example. Is she the same person two years ago when you first introduced the oils to her? And you know, one of my friends said, ah, no, she's just totally different. And I said, yeah, and, and you helped. You introduced the oils into her life. And look how her life is turning out now. She's creating this movement all on her own now. And you just did your part. So that's success. And sometimes just reminding people of that helps them just take a deep breath in and out and oh, relax and think, yeah, you're right, I am successful. Yeah, just because, you know, I had a class last night and nobody joined, that's okay. Because, you know, I've signed up other people before and those people's lives have changed. My life has changed. Okay. So that's the definition of success. You know, when you know you're calling and you feel you're calling, that's successful. Okay. Um, instead of like a why, sometimes a why, you know, you have to kind of have an end, um, like a destination. Like when my husband can be home with me, whatever. That's a destination. You just feel like I'm not getting there. And the other thing about having your um, noble purpose clear is that it teaches you to love others. Because as you learn to love yourself, you actually learn to love other people. Yeah, so that's a, just a summary. And I just put the, the sum, that, the points in words just here um, but uh, I don't need to explain that um, so do you want to say anything anyone <laughs> <laughs> I was just, uh, yeah go ahead about, um, you know people worrying about the money I'm not getting paid much right now we get paid in a lot of different ways and it's not all monetary you know we get we get lots of blessings and it doesn't always have a dollar sign in front of it so if you can focus on all of those things that you're gaining, like you said, we're learning, we're helping others, and focus on all of those blessings, the monetary part's going to take care of itself, I think, in the future. Yep, absolutely. Amen. I agree. Do you want to say, honey? Yeah, um, about um, defining your purpose. Are you getting into that later? Uh -huh. um, yeah, okay. I won't talk about that now. But um, yeah, so like people sometimes, I know in business school, we learn that it's not all about remuneration. Um, yes. Sometimes just, you know, making sure that people are appreciated and stuff like that. Because people are, they want to be a 
belong to something bigger than them. Yeah. And so that's what this uh, is about. And you got to take care of your needs. So if you need money, you got to, you know, maybe work on doTERRA part-time or in the evenings or anything, everything until you can replace that income. Mm -hmm. But um, really there's a higher purpose that we're all working for. And sometimes what we do for a li what we do for, you know, a living or what we do and what we do for money don't necessarily have to be the same thing. No. No. And sometimes it is and it's fun. I felt really excited knowing that I can earn money doing something fun and interesting all my life. So if you're going to spend 30 years of your life, 40 years working, you want to do something that's meaningful. Um, perhaps leave a legacy of some sort and add to the human experience. So let's look at what is your purpose? I like the story of um, the parable, the talents. I actually oh, we talked about it this week with uh, some of the people on the team. Um, I just, uh, with your permission, just tell, just retell that story really quickly. Um, so, um, before this master, I don't know what I have this in here. Before the master went away, he left, uh, um, his three servants, um, with some talents. And back then that's then that's what it, the money is. They call it talents. And one had five, one had two and the other had one. Uh, when the master came home, the servant with five talents and two talents, they doubled their talents. And um, when, he, when they reported back to him, um, he said, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. So he didn't differentiate the fact that one guy had two talents and only doubled it by two. Um, it just didn't matter. The amount didn't matter. Um, and the other guy, you know, he, he didn't, he buried it. And, um, and the master said to him, thou wicked and slothful servant. So I think about this a lot. You know, and, that, and that servant um, lost his one talent and it was given to the guy that had 10. Right? Um, and I'm not uh, teaching a, um, a, you know, doctrine lesson or here. Or anything but what I learned from it was um, to have faith to have faith in in the, the job the calling the noble purpose that you feel inside because all of us have this inner compass and we feel there's certain things that we need to do we feel strongly about things we just need to honor that and um, the other thing about this story that I learned is that you can magnify whatever gifts you've been given, even if you think that your gifts or skills is just very minuscule and, and very insignificant, okay? Even if it's money you have, because sometimes we use that money to invest in, in something to grow it or whatever opportunities you have, you take that opportunity and you maximize it because it's a way of showing faith, okay? Um, and the other thing I learned is that... Um, so what you have is valuable and it doesn't need to be compared. The master didn't compare the two talents with the five talents. Hey, you got four now and this guy has 10. He didn't compare, it didn't matter. Okay. Um, so whatever you have, um, don't compare. What you have is valuable in some way for more, um, you know. And number four, it says, I feel like, you know, it says don't be fearful. Just, just go and try and, and do your best at maximizing what you've been given. See, the, the guy that was fearful, he just buried it and he didn't use it. He didn't do anything with it. He didn't try. Um, so I, I don't want to be this fearful servant. I really want to be an instrument um, in God's hands to do whatever it is I need to do to further humanity. And number five, I just want to remind people that money is neutral. He didn't say money is bad here. And in fact, um, the Lord or the master here said that the servant was good and faithful. So um, I had lots of conversations with people over the last few years. They don't want to, you know, be successful. They don't want to do the business. They don't want to sell because money is evil somehow. And I'm going to remind everybody here that um, it's neutral and it's neither good or evil. It's what you do with it. It's, it's the action of good or evil. And you can attach anything to good and evil. 
but right now um, it's neutral. Okay, so what does that have to do with the, your purpose? <laughs> okay, so um, you're, you're, you're given talents, you're given gifts and talents. So use that gift and talent right, to further humanity. So everybody's purpose has two parts. And the first part is you serve humanity in some way. So, uh, you know, for us right now, we are blessing people with a knowledge of essential oils. You know, there's other talents that people can, um, you know, other ways we can serve humanity. We can entertain people. We can, um, you know, educate people in certain ways. There's lots of ways we can give to humanity. And the second thing to do is to use that God-given talent and gifts to serve humanity. So for me, um, Heavenly Father has told me to, to teach and um, to learn how the brain learns and to help people learn. And so I thought if I use that gift to help people learn about essentials, learn about health, um, you know, that's, that's my purpose, that's my noble purpose, and that's my part um, in this grand scheme of things. Um, there's a lot of people with other talents, and um, but we're going to pause here. Anyone want to say anything? Oh, I, I mean, I agree. It's, it's good. Mm -hmm. I've, I've always loved that story because it kind of teaches us that not everyone has the same talents, and it's okay. Mm -hmm. you know, some people think that music's the only talent you can have out there, but it's not. You know that. The arts are not the only talents you can have. There's talents in all areas of life, and you know everyone's different, and everyone has their own thing. And if you can tap into that and magnify it, then you're happy, and you can bless the lives of other people. So. Yeah, that's that's really a good point because sometimes people say, "Well, I have no talents. I don't play any instruments," and that's kind of sad because it's what are you good at? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So I was in that same situation too. And I thought, well, I taken it some information, I digest it and then I, you know, deliver it in a way that people can understand it, I think. <laughs> you know, um, and that's something I can do. So, you know, you just work with whatever you have, whatever little you have even, but it will grow and it will magnify. And I was excited to, to know that I can add uh, more to that talent list. You know, I can ask for more talent. So. Um, it makes me excited to um, find out other things that I might be able to develop. So I have some questions here for people that are just seeking um, and not sh quite sure what their noble purpose is. Okay, so the first thing is, what is my gift and talent? Um, and like Kayla said, it doesn't have to be um, musical. And, you know, you know, even if you are musical, say you are a singer, songwriter, um, even health coach, you can think to yourself, well, there's a lot of singers out there. There's a lot of songwriters out there. But you know what? That, you know, your take, your voice, you, you know, your music isn't out there. So there's still lots of room uh, for you to add um, yourself to it. Uh, when you honour yourself, you're you truly love yourself, then um, you will be unique in your own way. So I felt like mine is teaching and coaching. So, you know, and I just, I'll stick with it. <laughs> you know, and I don't want to compare or look at other people's talents and wish that that was mine. Um, so I'll enjoy and I'll maximize what I have. Yeah. So I was watching this, uh, Ted video a long time ago where uh, he said that you know that you can identify your life's purpose in five steps um, five questions um, first who are you second what are you good at what do you enjoy doing and third who do you do it for and fourth what do those people need and fifth what do those people gain from you doing that thing? And that, that fifth one um, exemplifies, you know, your purpose. Um, so 
in the lab. Like I help um, mothers um, be empowered through blah, 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 you know, whatever it is your unique talent is. Um, it's, it's all, and three of those five are about other people. It's about serving. And so that's, and, and Jade's kind of captured this in like these couple here. Um, yeah, it's about what, who you are, what you have to give to the world and how you can bless the world. So that's kind of encapsulates the idea of your noble purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think I use the word noble purpose because uh, a long time ago I read um, Dale Carnegie's um, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Um, and I think he said something about humans. Um, they're, very, they're moved by noble purposes. So if we could discover our noble purpose, we'll be moved by it. And uh, I just got very excited and I tried to ask God what it is that I was meant to do here on earth. And when I found, found out, you know, I don't know if it's all of it, some of it, just a hint of what I'm supposed to do here, I got very excited. And, um, you know, I just went ahead and honored that. So number two here, it says, how can I help the world with this gift and talent? Sort of like what Ben said to, um, you know, at least for me, I can help people learn how to take care of their health and their spirit and um, help guide them, you know, to, to finding their, their true inner self. And um, that's one, one thing I can do. Um, and there's just, there's lots of pathways um, and more pathways will open. Uh, so when I was um, looking at uh, college and I was deciding what um, course to take, I had two, I narrowed it down to two options, uh, law or education, and because I was able to do both. Um, and I went to law and I found that it wasn't something that I really enjoyed. So I switched to education and I felt like I was guided. I was guided in learning about um, the brains and how people learn and um, how to teach. So I thought that was it. <laughs> I thought, oh, I'm going to be a teacher for life. That's cool. And after a few years, when I was introduced to the essential oils, um, it was help people with their health. And I thought, oh, yes, I can teach people about their health. Cool. And then more doors opened and it helped me understand their spiritual healing powers that come um, as a part of healing. And who knows what other doors will be open to us. Um, but it's exciting that uh, you know, as you honor yourself, you take a step forward, more doors open up. Okay, and then you discover that your talents has led you down that path. And then you, you will have more talents to accomplish the next task. Anyone? Want to say anything? No. Okay. So number three here is, do I feel God's love for me? So this is really, really important. Um, I feel as part of um, finding your noble purpose. Okay. If you don't feel God's love, I don't think you'll be able to find your noble purpose. So that's the, the you know, the feeling that I have. But once you, you find that, once you love God and once you allow his love in, you have a greater self-love, you have a greater a sense of love for yourself. And when you have that love for yourself, you're able to love others more. Uh, when people say, I put myself last, you know, I take care of everyone else, we don't truly love others. It's not a true love because you don't know how it feels because you have not given it to yourself. You have not allowed that into your heart. But when you truly love yourself, you suddenly see other people's potential and truly love them. And I, I really appreciate that these two are the very first and the second commandments of God. You know, love God and then love others like you love yourself. And I get it now. Because <laughs> once you know who you are, you honor yourself, you love yourself, you're healthy, you're happy. Then you know how to help people be happy and healthy. You see? 
So I think if we don't have this part, how do you know? How do you know your noble purpose? Because if you're not happy, if you don't feel that love of God, then where are you going? Right? Does that make sense? So this is very key, I feel. But your, your life, you know, in your life experiences, so little things that you do anyways, naturally, your um, just talents and gifts that people point out, that should be a clue of where to start. And, you know, that gives you an opportunity to see that, that there, that's where God loves me, right? That's what he's given me. So anyways, to dig into this topic further, I have um, here, the next uh, part of it is active faith helps you focus on your purpose. So we can have this beautiful purpose that we have identified and it's burning inside of us. But for a lot of people, they get excited and they tell me all about it, um, but it hasn't created emotion. And when you identify your purpose and you know exactly what you need to do, it should create motion. So sometimes I tell people to keep digging deeper, go back to the drawing board. But as you go back to the drawing board, you need to have something physical that you're doing. So faith is doing. That's a, you know, thinking and feeling is one part of it, but doing is the next part. And sometimes what stops us from doing are the negative, um, fearful emotions. So I have here um, a list of, of emotions that are fear-based and emotions that are faith-based. Okay, so you can um, take your time and have a look at that. So anytime we can identify with an emotion on the fear side, all we have to do is say that we release it and then we try to adopt the emotions on the faith side. So fear is dark, blame, worry, lack, stress, stubborn, controlling. And faith is love, light, joy, surrender, right, contentment, freedom. So this will give us a clue of what's stopping us. We, we know where we're going to go. We know what we want to achieve. If you're not achieving it fast enough, there's still more work to do. Some of us want us to go, can we just get on with it already? But this is the important part of this existence, the part where we release the darkness and we come into the light. And fear is darkness and faith is light. <clears throat> okay? So there's a chart for you online. Um, and this can be found under the advanced business. Personal. Oh, sorry. Can I say something about that too? I think sometimes faith is that patience and waiting. Because it's not on our time schedule. And when we want things to speed up, it's not always going to, even if we are faithful. Because part of that faith is waiting for the right time to happen or for things to happen at the right time. Yeah. And if we can exercise that faith and just wait and wait, <laughs> it will happen, mm -hmm. but it, not necessarily on our time. So I want to clarify the wait because I've seen people wait and they sit in their fear. Yes. They get stressed and they get hopelessness. But while you wait, it's called surrendering. Okay. Yes. You surrender the outcome. That's the waiting on the Lord. So to clarify, surrendering the outcome. I want this, uh, you know, say I've got friends that are going through divorces, several, several of them, and they want this court case to go the way they want to. Right? But they're so fearful. They just sit there, pace, 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 pace. But within that time, they could think of, you know, imagine beautiful things happening, imagine great outcomes, you know, and just letting the, whatever the results and the outcome is, letting it go. Look, Heavenly Father, this is what I want. I prayed for this, but I will accept your will. And so that's like surrendering. And it's yes. not sitting there waiting, waiting for my husband to change, waiting for my teammates to work. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't mean that you can just sit and wait. You have to mm -hmm. be active and be yeah. working toward those goals or working toward whatever it is you want to accomplish. That's it. And then, then... You know, I think sometimes he waits to see if we're going to give up or not and have, if we're going to have faith or if we're going to not have faith. Yeah, yeah. And you, we need to be still, you know. We, 
there's moments when we just need to st just be still and listen to him and just get guidance because sometimes if we're rushing in anger in pride in whatever it is that we're doing in just panic we're not listening mm -hmm. so there's a balance and so sometimes we just need to check ourselves and say where am i where's my happy meter i'm not happy even in a, a situation where it's uh, you know i've seen a lady she said um she's she's grieving she's grieving and she's grieving as a loss and um she refuses to surrender that grief to god mm -hmm. and she said i just wish she can go away but here she is holding on to fear and then trying to hold on to faith at the same time i'm like let go let go of that grief he's got mm -hmm. you i wish no 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 and for some reason that's not waiting that's not faith. Right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yep. Good. So part of waiting on God, you know, is using your intellect, your God given intelligence to say, look, I am going to visualize, I'm going to, you know, decide what it is that I want. God's job is the how here. This is, you know, what I want. But if sometimes if we don't know what we want, it's hard to, to know, you know, where, where we're going. So, God, I want this. Is that okay? But then develop it, dream it, um, have a vision board. And that's one of the things that I feel like is active faith. Instead of saying, I want something and just waiting, give it to me now or give it to me whenever you feel like. So, for me, I feel like, okay, let me cut up pictures of really what I, and it is that I want because when you manifest it, you and God work together to, uh, to create that. So, you build your faith. That's a faith promoting activity. Um, so we encourage people to have vision boards. There's lots of um, people to teach uh, about vision boards and you keep updating it um, as you progress and evolve. And that's great. And that's easy enough. Okay. But what I like to sh share with you is some ways to be proactive and not reactive. Uh, we hear that all the time, but sometimes I feel like people need an opportunity to to see examples. So one example of being proactive is releasing the need to blame people and situations. So blaming gives away your power. Okay, um, blame the situation, blame finances, blame husbands, not supportive, in lots of things. So there's three oils that I suggest. The first one is fennel. Okay, fennel oil is accepting responsibility i accept full responsibility for my thoughts actions and life and somehow we we created it even though things happen but we we create a lot of it too okay um so we as you accept full responsibility you'll see why um you have what you have okay um and ginger is another oil it's about being powerful and owning that power, just bringing all that power back in here, okay? Instead of letting it go and because of this, because of that reason, because of genetics, because of my parents, nope. Ginger is owning your power. And so an affirmation for it is, I release all resistance to feeling strong and powerful. Because sometimes people feel like, oh, I'm so weak, I can't do anything. So there's some resistance to, to becoming strong, becoming powerful. And ginger helps with that. And the other oil to help release the blame that I felt um, to share is spikenard. And spikenard is the oil of um, gratitude for trials. Um, so I'm grateful for challenges. I see them as opportunities for growth and change. So sometimes I meet people that are sick and, or... Um, a challenged in some ways and they just think oh it's such a mess and I said look at the perfection of this if you were in this situation we wouldn't have met and you wouldn't have had this opportunity to change and sometimes people say well at work this happened this happened and I said look you know this is good because it gives you an opportunity to get out because now you can see that this is not where you want to be for the next few years and so spike nard helps you. And how you know that you have adopted it is by how much you love that oil. So I am pleased to announce that spike nard is now my friend. <laughs> it was not my friend for a while. 
and it's really nice smelling. So I smelt it again today. I'm like, it's so nice. I like it. Okay. <laughs> I used my whole first bottle of Spikenard all up, Jade. Okay. <laughs> I had to order a new one. <laughs> <laughs> you worked hard making friends with that Spikenard. I did. <laughs> yeah. One of my daughters still don't like it. She goes, oh, something smells like poop. Something's rotting. <laughs> Something's moldy in here. <laughs> like, okay, keep going. Um, yeah, that's all right. We will be patient with ourselves and we'll get over it. <laughs> so those are the three oils. The oil of responsibility, the oils of power, and the oil of seeing the greatness in our trials. So there are opportunities. Okay, the next thing about being proactive is to release the need to control the outcome or be willful. Um, remember, the how is God's job. Okay, your part is just discover the what or the um, or some of the whys. You know, what I want is to be happy or to have an opportunity to travel or, you know, to help children or whatever. And God will provide the how. This is how you're going to be able to do that. Okay, tell the universe what you want. Okay. You need to know what you want to be able to ask for it. Okay. And the oil for this is geranium. Geranium is I trust the universe and God. It's a trust and love oil. Okay, Let it happen in the right time for me and for my higher good. Funny enough, geranium is fantastic for the kidneys and the kidneys store a lot of fear. I fear and distrust. <laughs> so, you know, we have lots of um, health problems connected to the kidneys. And, um, yeah, geranium is fantastic at helping it clean out. Okay. Alrighty, so that was releasing the control of the outcome. Um, one friend asked me, uh, what's the difference between, you know, trying to manifest like a class, you say, oh, I'm manifesting a class of, of 15 people and I want them all to join. And I said, that's great. And she's like, but when, what's the point that you just, you know, you don't want to be willful. So what, what do you do? And I said, well, good question. What I do is I pray and ask for that. I want a big class filled with people and nearly everyone joins. But I let go. If it's not God's will, then I'm not going to force it. But at least he knows what I want and I know what I want. And that's the difference. So just be accepting. If it's not going to work that way, that's okay. I'm not going to be upset because that's probably meant to be. Okay. So that's releasing the control of the outcome. Be willful. Okay. The other thing to do is be a problem solver. We have, um, you know, an opportunity between every stimulus and response to choose, okay? And things happen all the time. So we can choose to be a problem solver. I know if people are problem solvers because they come to me with solutions or um, options or, um, you know, they tell me that they've tried to solve it, but they can't. And that's great. And I feel fantastic about helping those people. But I feel uncomfortable helping people that just bring a problem to me and um, with no solutions. You know, one of the scripture stories that I, I know of is a guy that wants light in his ship, right? And God said, uh, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> you know, I was like, yeah, you guys go think about it. And then, you know, tell me and I'll help you out. So that's what I like to do with people. I don't want to be mean, but I just feel like I don't want to keep robbing you of your power because if you don't have your power, you will not be able to change. Okay. So here are some examples. Okay. Very common examples. And it says, Jade, I don't know the number for doTERRA customer service. <laughs> you know what? It's all over the internet, but they didn't look for it. Right. So instead, I'd like to people to come up and say, hey, Jay, do you know where else I can go to get the number for doTERRA services? I looked online and in my papers couldn't find it. That's fair. That's fair. They, they put some effort forward 
and I'm happy to help them. Okay, it's the same with our children too. Because what happens is they're going to hit a barrier. They're going to hit a wall in their business. If I help them now, just immediately spoon feed them now, you know, there's going to be another problem that I have to spoon feed them. And they're never going to be a leader that can be self-sufficient, right? And you want them to, to do that so that they can be great examples to their teams. So that's what um, I'm talking about. That's, so if you think about yourself, you think, okay, Am I a problem solver? So one lady said, I ran out of this particular product. I don't want to like, name it. Um, and I said, okay. <laughs> you know, I, I know exactly what I would do. <laughs> but it's funny because it's like waiting, waiting, waiting. Jay, tell me what to do. So I'm thinking, come on. Let's order it. I've never heard this problem you know, presented to me like that. But what it tells me is this person is giving away her power over and over and over again not bring proactive, okay? So here, instead of, my husband is so unsupportive, say, Jay, do you know what else I can do to help you know, myself feel more supported um, from my husband? Okay, I try to support him in his interests. I use geranium oil, whatever it is. That person has given me some solutions that they're thinking about, but they're asking for my input and see what else I can add to them. Happy to help with those people. Okay, uh, example number three, Jay, doTERRA should blah, blah, blah. Hear that all the time. You should carry this. They should, you know, sell this oil. They should do it this way. Yeah, but you're giving away your power. So why don't you say, um, you know, doTERRA services, I emailed them, I gave them my feedback, but in the meantime, this is how I'm going to solve that problem. You know, it's funny because when I first started doTERRA, they didn't have most of the, the wonderful um, tools that they have today. And I was still able to do the, the business. Um, you know, I really appreciate uh, the, the hard work and the solution um, seeking skills that a lot of my relatives have as refugees. Oh, I can't speak English. Well, then they work around it. I don't have a, this skill. They work around it. They find somebody to teach them that skill. They are solution seekers. So that's what we should do. Okay. In anything we have, there is a solution. Give it a go. One last example. Jay, my teammate isn't doing anything, isn't returning my calls. Great. That's good to hear um, from you. You recognize that. But if that person could say to me, Jay, my teammate um, is not replying to my emails and texts, that's right. But I have these suggestions. You have other suggestions. That makes me feel like they have solutions. Okay. And that they, they have their power. That's, that's my, it's more important for me that they learn those skills. It's a problem. Okay. Anyone who's <laughs> anything? Okay. I'll just move on. Um, so the next thing about being proactive is be humble and happy. Um, humility um, is about being willing to change as the way God sees fit. So I'm going to say it again, it's about being willing to change. In the religious world, so we call the word change, you know, repent. Okay? That's all it is. It is change. But no, that has nothing to do with people's money or financial state. Sometimes people are in a humble state, but it could be that they're sick. It could be that they have hit rock bottom and now they have to look up to God. Okay? Some people think that just because they're poor, they must be humble. Um, I beg to differ. So an oil to use is wild orange and balance. Okay, so mix those two oils together. And an affirmation is I allow God, um, I allow God, okay, I wrote this funny. I have to change it. Thank you. I, to easily bless me with plenty of money, time, friends, joy, pleasure, okay, to come into my life. Okay, something like that. I'll fix that sentence later. Okay. I easily allow God to bless me with plenty of time, money, friends, pleasure. Okay. So that's humility. humility allowing God's um, will to be done. Okay. So I like to think of um, there's a happy meter inside of me. And I think of this because I'm a very visual person. Um, so whenever I don't feel happy, um, 
you know, I try to identify what it is. Is it me being distracted, prideful, me being fearful? Something is causing me not to be happy because when I'm not happy, I'm not, um, you know, focused on my purpose. Okay. So think about that and ask yourself, how's my happy meter? What's the reading? Okay. And that's it <laughs> for today. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Let's say anything. Good job. I think you covered everything. Any comments, Kayla? It was great. Can, can people be over solution finders <laughs> <laughs> and think that they have to do them all themselves and not seek for help? Oh, yes. That's yeah, that's true. overly yeah. willful, right? They think that they, they need to do everything themselves. Yeah, they extreme. Solve yeah. the things themselves, yeah, or solve other problem, other people's, other problems, people's problems too. Well, that would be the opposite of humility too, because that would that would kind of go onto the pride side of things, you know. That's right. Yeah, um, I had one lady. She was. Um, I was trying to explain to her that um, being uh, selfish means you. What did I say here? There's a. You know, we think selfish people are just thinking about themselves and um, trying to be above other people, right? Yeah, all about me, look at me, bling, bling, bling. But um, selfish people can think about themselves and insist on being below people. That's the other selfishness. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I'm not good, I'm not good, I'm just, you know, never going to be great. That is being selfish because you, all you're thinking about is yourself. Right. And so much time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like those people who always have something wrong with them or always. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's not humility. Not humility. I used, oh. to, call it, I used to call it fishing for compliments. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Validate yeah. me. I don't love yeah, me. Exactly. You know, they, they, you know, I think maybe it's a, self-esteem issue you know where they they have to be const constantly validated that they that, that they are the way that they want to be or think that they're not yeah yeah <laughs> but and they actually are <laughs> yeah yeah they were created though um what we need to do is just love and encourage um but i any opportunity i get if they are slightly open i let them know that they're giving their power away yeah because really if you connect to Heavenly Father, you have all the power you need. You have all the validation you need. And you do not need other people to validate who you are, how good you are, how much value you have. Mm -hmm. It doesn't need to be measured against any human measurements. Yep. Mm -hmm. So guys, um, find your noble purpose and be happy. <laughs> yep. All I have to say. All right, we'll go ahead and end it there.